Hi, I'm Dee and I have multiple sclerosis. I'm making this video in case any of you are in the position I was in just over three years ago, trying to decide which medication to take to reduce the progression of my MS. I'd been to see my consultant neurologist and he'd shown me my MRI scan. He showed me lesion after lesion and I was completely astounded. It's in my brain and my spinal cord, so he recommended a high potency immunosuppressive medication. He recommended Ocrevus, which is otherwise known as Ocrelizumab. Um, so I'm just making this video in case it helps to get an actual example of somebody who's lived with the medication for three years. Having said that, there's a branch of science that's expanding quickly called pharmacogenomics, um, which studies the impact of drugs on different people and how different people's bodies respond in different ways due to their genetic makeup. So it might be that there are other drugs out there, or there certainly are other drugs out there, but there might, it might be that one of those other drugs suits you better. But I just wondered if it'd be helpful to get a first-hand experience. Um, I'm certainly not being paid by anyone who makes Ocrevus or anybody else. Here's a really simplistic diagram of um, one of our white blood cells. Um, this is a B cell. B cells uh, make these Y-shaped proteins called antibodies. And antibodies latch onto um, invading pathogens, um, that means germs or disease-causing microorganisms. And the antibodies destroy those pathogens. So they're really, really useful for our immune system. They're not the only cells of our immune system, however. There are many other different types. Now, Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. Um, to understand how the uh, white blood cells affect it, I just need to tell you a bit about the structure of the, white, of the neurons. So here's a neuron. The messages come in through the top here, the dendrites, and they travel down this central axon, this line that goes through the middle. And they travel to the axon terminals, the bits at the end, and then they go from... Um, here to the next neuron, um, or to the next neuron, to the next neuron, and that's what a neural pathway is. So messages travel around our body via neural pathways. We've got billions of these in our central nervous system, and the messages travel up to 120 meters per second. One of the reasons they can travel so quickly is this, these bands of insulation here. Um, what we've got here, I've got a cross-section view, there's a type of cell called a Schwann cell, which wraps itself around the axon, creating this layer of insulation. And that insulation acts in the same way as this cable here, the plastic around the cable, makes sure the electrical impulse gets to, um, gets to the end really quickly. But in multiple sclerosis, um, our B cells make antibodies that actually destroy our Schwann cells and they degrade it. It's called a degenerative disease because this, the degradation of our Schwann cells means that the electrical impulse can't travel as quickly and it might not get to the end. And that's why we have trouble getting messages um, through our body. Um, and if, if there's a lesion here, our neurons would have to bypass it and they might have to make a really convoluted pathway to where it needs to go, which is why we get fatigue because um, we get fatigue because sometimes we have a really, really long neural pathways where they should have been quite short. And every time electrical impulse gets passed through, that takes energy. The way Ocrevus works is to destroy our B cells um, if our B cells are destroyed, they can't make the antibodies and therefore the antibodies can't destroy the Schwann cells. It's called ocrelizumab because it's a monoclonal antibody treatment. That means they make antibodies in laboratories that target the B cells. So the B cells are killed by antibodies themselves. Again, it doesn't mean our whole immune system is destroyed though because we have many other types of white blood cell. Um, to add to that, our body is continually making new white blood cells, including B cells. So it's not like once you've had the ocrevus, we'll never make B cells again. 
The reason we have to take it over and over again is because our B cells will build up from the time we have it um, right through to the next treatment, they'll just build up. So that's why we have to have it over and over again. I'm just gonna talk you through the process itself. So you arrive in hospital first thing in the morning and um, they do temperature checks, blood pressure checks, make sure you're, you're healthy that day. Um, and then they start to give you a concoction of drugs. Um, they put a cannula into one of your veins and um, that's, that's how they'll deliver the drugs for the rest of the day. Um, I usually get given painkillers Antihistamines, steroids, there are various saline drugs that go through the body, at, I can't remember which times. Um, and the antihistamine and steroids, they're about making sure um, your body doesn't react dangerously to the drug. Uh, then you get the ocrevus. I always take plenty to do because I know I'm going to be in there a few hours. Um, so I ask for the cannula to be put into my left hand. Having said that, to be honest, the antihistamine knocks me out pretty much straight away and I sleep through a lot of it. Um, so it, it takes a few hours and the first time you have it, you have um, the first lot in two different sessions. Then you have a half dose the first time, the second half the second time. That's just to make sure that your body doesn't react dangerously to the drug. Um, then... After many hours, you'll be allowed to go home. They, they observe you for an hour after all the drugs have been put into your system. Um, and if you're okay, they'll send you home. Um, I feel groggy for the entire day and I really would not recommend driving at the end of your treatment. I write off that entire day. Ocrevus does tend to lower blood pressure. Um, mine went down to 80 over 50 in the first time, so they actually kept me in and put me on an ECG to make sure my heart was okay, but it was fine, and I felt fine. Um, but that's one of the things that it does. Um, I was advised to take the next day off work as well because I, they thought I, it's quite common that people get flu-like symptoms. Um, I've never done that. I always wake up feeling fine. I tire towards the afternoon. Um, but I've not taken that second day off work. I felt good enough to go in. Um, and then for the next few days, I mean, the worst has been up to 12 days, I think. I've had just moments of lightheadedness and nausea, but nothing too bad. And I have been able to live my normal life. Um, the third day after my first treatment, though, I did some challenging kayaking and realised quite quickly that my body was not up to that. So you have your first lot in two different sessions, two weeks apart. Then after that, you have it every six months approximately. I'm just gonna tell you now about how being an ocrevus affects my life. Um, apart from that initial grogginess and the lightheadedness and nausea for the few days after the treatment, I don't have any side effects. I live a totally normal life. Um, I did worry because I was on immunosuppressive medication that I would have cold after cold or infection after infection. I would have to have loads of time off work. I wouldn't feel very well, but genuinely it, I, it's not been like that at all. I haven't had any days off work. I haven't felt more ill than anybody else would um, over small infections like a cold or something. Um, it really hasn't been noticeable for me in that way. Uh, sadly, over the pandemic, um, I was required to shield for months, um, twice, and for a few weeks on a third time. Um, that was hard, but it's because, theoretically, being on immunosuppressive medication means that if I was to get COVID, um, it would have a much more severe impact or could have had a much more severe impact on me. Um, having said that, I had COVID twice and I honestly don't think I had it any worse than anybody else. The second time, it was barely noticeable. Something that can be slightly challenging is um, if you go to a pharmacy to buy an over-the-counter drug that you would have got before many times, um, if they ask you, you're on immunosuppressive medication and you say yes, often they say they can't sell you the drug and they send you to your GP, which is quite difficult at the moment. Um, 
So that's just another small problem associated with being on immunosuppressive medication. Uh, the thing that hurts for me is, is travel. So I've been advised not to go anywhere where I'd need vaccines because um, vaccines work by stimulating your B cells to make antibodies. But if you don't have the B cells, then they can't do that, making the vaccines ineffective. Um, and you certainly can't have live vaccines because that's actually putting the pathogen into the body. And if you don't have the B cells, they can't make the antibodies to destroy the pathogen and it actually could cause the infection. So um, it's quite limiting as to where we can go. And I've, I've, one of my biggest passions in life is travel. Um, so uh, when I speak to professionals about it, they often say, just stick, stick to the resorts and just don't go into any jungles. Whereas I'm thinking, but that's exactly what I wanted to do. I want to go trekking through jungles. Um, but I realise how spoiled I'm sounding. I'm just trying to give you an honest account. Um, and I also realise that not travelling long distances is good for the environment. So I try to look at it from that positive angle. But that's just another thing that it affects. Um, so there are many side effects listed for any immunosuppressive drug. Um, and on ocrevus.com, there's a, there's a um, comprehensive list of side effects that could be associated with ocrevus. And it's quite scary. I think there are lists like that for many drugs, but it's worth having a look. One of the um, potential risks is um, it can give us an increased chance of having breast cancer. I think that if, there's a, if there was a history of breast cancer in my family, maybe I would have um, chosen differently when it came to deciding which medication to take. Overall, I'm really glad that I was allowed to be on Ocrevus. Um, I'm definitely not symptom free. Any symptoms um, and fatigue that um, caused by the initial lesions before I was diagnosed will remain. But um, I've had three annual MRIs since and each one has shown no new lesions. So I consider myself very lucky. I'm going to end there and just say, if you're in the same position that I was in just over three years ago, trying to choose your medication, I wish you the best of luck with it. Take care. Thank you very much for watching.